see the name. I don't know the people. His lab, did you work in OSU? I worked in uh, Peter Eschbach's lab. What did work in this lab? Uh, that's in the electron microscopy lab. Okay. So I pretty much did like the last part of her thing. Cool. That's what my whole internship was based on. Whoever organized this session is awesome. <laughs> 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 So, uh, my name is Justin Newman. I work with uh, Peter Eschbach and Teresa Sawyer and Joan Hudson in the electron uh, microscopy lab. And so, for my presentation, we're going to be going back early in the 1900s where there's only black and white. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> so, on my first day, Peter kind of showed me a little bit uh, with uh, EV lithography and the Quant 3D SEM. And so, we just did some simple drawings that come standard with the MPGS program that we use to make batch rights. It's kind of like Slicer, it just kind of quantifies uh, CAD drawings. Um, so, since I had a, for, like, I was familiar with uh, sputtering before my internship, and they had a sputtering machine for a while, like six months or so, and nobody had ever really used it except once, and there was a problem with it. it created this uh, dry lake bed kind of looking coating with uh, iridium and naturally iridium is supposed to look like the left hand one, very, very smooth, very fine grains and so it completely destroyed the person's sample that they were coding. So that was a uh, big, big failure on the coding. So that was my first project uh, to try to figure out why that was happening and then I also tried to make my own um, CAD models to do my own lithography. And so these are my first, these are what they're supposed to look like, little smiley faces, just something. Um, and that's a dose array, so I believe starting at uh, the top left hand, it would be 1.8 nanocombs per square centimeter, and then in the bottom uh, right hand corner would be around 4 uh, nanocombs per square centimeter. And so it'd have an array because uh, sometimes if you had a large enough array, some things would get better resolution with finer lines or larger lines and whatnot, and it'd print faster with a uh, smaller dwell time or anecdotes per square centimeter. And, but that is what I ended up getting, which is nothing <laughs> near what I intended to draw. So actually, I should also clarify, this is on uh, PMMA, so it's kind of the same principle as uh, old Nikon where you'd take a picture and then you'd get a uh, picture and then you'd have to let it develop. Well, uh, what this was is the electron beam was shined on PMMA and it developed it and then we'd, or it uh, exposed it, which would harden it, and then we'd take it in and use some solvents and uh, develop it so it'd wash away the rest of the PMMA that wasn't exposed. Um, so, did some different steps to try to get some different results, but we kept coming up with only the top part uh, would show up, and then this top middle picture, the, pic uh, the orientation is actually upside down because the uh, drawings are so small that you can't tell what orientation they are unless you mark the uh, PMMA to orientate it right in the SEM, and so it's kind of hard to actually orientate them <coughs> right by chance, and that one over there in the bottom right hand corner I, by chance, got it to be exactly, well, not quite exactly, but almost exactly straight. And then in the bottom left-hand corner here, we were thinking that it's the development process where we removed the PMMA that wasn't developed, and so we uh, exposed right on a 90-degree uh, line and developed one half and then left the other half undeveloped, and then we submerged it in a developer and then the remover, and it come up with this really flaky, uh, border that it should have been a very crisp line. And so we come to the determination that the chemicals were actually inspired by uh -huh. a lot of two, two years, two and a half years. So that was part of the problem. And then um, so here's some more failed attempts. So I actually left the uh, silicon wafers with PMMA on them on it laying out by the window that had direct sunlight and it partially developed. Um, 
with the MMA, and so that's why it's all speculated. It's because the uh, white spots are the developed uh, parts that didn't get washed away. And uh, that's actually my scratch that I use as kind of a reference to try to find it, because you're looking for this itty bitty little tiny thing on this on a 10 millimeter by 10 millimeter little wafer, and you'd spend hours looking for it if you didn't have some kind of reference point. And then um, on the right hand side is uh, some crystals that were growing on it from uh, the water that we were using because I used conventional tap water instead of DI water to wash off the developer. <coughs> um, so here are some uh, sample files that come with the MPGS program that uh, Joe Nabby made. And uh, they're also with some uh, changes on the actual microscope. So, Apparently, between the first day when I got there and Pete was showing me the uh, sample files uh, with little stars and whatnot, and the day that I went back to try, there's also someone that had actually bumped a switch that changed the settings on the beam blanker, which uh, is kind of like a kind of like this projector here. You hold your hand in front of it, and it exposes only certain parts. Well, the beam blanker does that, and so I changed the settings to make it not do exactly what you're telling it. It was doing something else to cut off bottom, uh, sections, like bars, of the image. And so that's why the bottom half of the mouth wasn't being uh, developed. And so here are some files that Joe Nappy had done. And in the middle, on the bottom, you can actually see where one of them was uh, wrote on top of where one of my scratches was. So that's kind of cool. Um, here on big picture on the left is uh, something that you could use to check the resolution of uh, how fine you could make. And so those are about 100 to 150 nanometers crossed up there in the top left hand corner. So they're very, very, very small. And, but the bulk of uh, our drawings are in like the 10 nanometer area. Um, so, after working with that for a while trying to figure out what was actually wrong, we went back to my first project, and so here are some closer images of uh, that dry lake bed looking back, and then the top image is a cross-section, uh, well actually it's not a cross-section, well it is a cross-section, but the cleaved section of uh, what my coatings look like, and you can see the uh, grain structure going upwards that causes this uh, dry lake bed splitting effect uh, on the top image. And uh, we were trying to figure out what was causing this and we initially thought that it was uh, impure argon, so you'll pump down to very low pressure, so I was operating at about 5 times 10 to the negative 5 door is what the initial pump down was to, and then you backfill to around uh, 4.5 times 10 to negative 2 is what we thought <laughs> for the backfill of argon. And we thought that it was just impure argon that was causing this to split apart and uh, not grow correctly. But it turned out to be that it wasn't the argon that was fault. It could have been the argon that was impure, but it didn't seem to have a drastic effect once uh, I ran some tests with it but is actually the uh, directions in the manual that come with the sputtering machine were incorrect. You'd think that a company would put a patch out for a $30,000 machine uh, when the manual is incorrect, but they didn't. And Peter actually found out when he went to, uh, to a conference over on the East Coast and he was talking to them. And they went, oh yeah, by the way, uh, our manual is askew. It's, five times 10 to the negative three and not five times 10 to the negative two tor that you backfill to the argon. And then here are also some hydrocarbons that were deposited on the film that were from uh, the sputtering chamber. When they assembled it, apparently they did not have the uh, sanitary standard that you would when you're operating and having no fingerprints and no oils and grease and whatnot in there, the off gas. And, uh, I don't have a picture of it because I couldn't get a very good picture with my phone. But uh, 
there is actually handprints from when they're manufacturing it on the bottom of the chamber. So we know it's from manufacturing because it was in a part that was bolted down and then we took it off and the fingerprints went down and around and back out to the outside of the chamber where the guy had grabbed it and set it there and then bolted it on. And so there is a lot of contamination that's been by a good three or four hours cleaning the chamber just to get it to where these would appear everywhere. Um, so here is a closer image. Uh, you can see down a little scale bar, 500 nanometers. This is actually took with uh, the Helios, which is one of the more powerful uh, SEM machines that's in the electron microscope lab at Oregon State. So we could get a better, better resolution of uh, the hydrocarbons and then the cracking up there at the very top, you can see that. And then that's actually iridium embedded in the hydrocarbon because that hydrocarbon was put there as the sputtering process was actually happening. Um, so here is with uh, nucleum domain. That's, I had also kind of stopped my project because I by accident ruined all the PMMA by leaving it out in the sunlight, or at least the PMMA that we had. And so we got new PMMA and then went back to the original steps. And I don't know if you guys can see it with the sunlight, but there are arrays of uh, fully developed genetic bases there that are just very faint. Because at the time we were operating with uh, acceleration voltage, uh, I believe 15 kV, and previously we were running around 45 kV is the acceleration voltage. Um, and so just to give you some perspective, this actually is the better graph. This is the better graph. Um, so size of, say, um, gold leaf, 125 uh, nanometers, that's that just paper thin stuff that you can't, if you hold it on edge, you can see down it. That's about the size of what those cracks were on that. And there's, just from the naked eye, you couldn't tell any difference on the coating. And so being able to look at my uh, coatings to figure out that there was something wrong with the SEMs was a great help. And it actually helped me understand how the sputtering process was actually happening versus, uh, say, evaporation deposition. It has essentially the same end result. It just doesn't have high enough, high, as high of uh, quality and, uh, end film. So, yeah. There is actually even a better yet one. So the diameter of a capillary or um, a red blood cell right there is about the size of my larger drawings, so I can put one of my drawings on one of your red blood cells. <laughs> That's how small they were. So, yeah, and I would love to give great appreciation to Peter S. Fleshbach, my mentor, uh, Joan Hudson, who was around in Peak Pleasant for his uh, conference in all around the East Coast, and Teresa Sawyer, the lab manager, and then all of the ASC staff for making this possible in Oregon State for the facilities that I could use. And then here are the resources to those graphs. Um, Denton, vacuum. You mentioned a lot of contamination concerns. Were you operating in a clean room? Well, we weren't operating in a necessary clean room, but we did have a lot of uh, precautions to keep things very clean because just any kind of dust particles would create huge mountains. <laughs> Size of individual stereocilia. That's so, so beautiful. 
<laughs> Any other questions? I was just going to ask, what is the potential application for this sort of technology or this process? Um, <coughs> in the medical field, you can pass, so if I go back to uh, this one, this right here, uh, they use in the medical field. Um, my mouse is showing up. Yeah. So they pass like a uh, a liquid through it and then they can measure the resistance across it and tell what the makeup of it was. So that's a um, circuit industry because this is, well, this isn't quite, but the uh, sputtering is very similar to how they make um, um, processor chips and whatnot. Deposition of that. So